very kind introduction, Nikki De Rose. Maayong nga po sa inyo ng tanahan. Hindi masyadong mahinit, no? Graduating class in medicine, President Luis Rada Jr., Dean Villarouz, University and College officials, faculty and staff, alumni, parents, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is with great pride and pleasure that I am here today to give the commencement address with your dean, Dean Villarouz, succeeding me to be the president of the Association of the Philippine Medical Colleges this June 2015, I simply have to be here today to share your moment of joy and glory. My warmest greetings and congratulations to Medicine Class of 2015. You have completed your four-year medical course. You have reached a major milestone in your professional life towards becoming an excellent Filipino physician. I also congratulate your parents, family, and loved ones. They too have high stakes in your success. They have persevered in providing the necessary support and resources for you to be here today. Their unqualified commitment and unconditional love provided you the strength to persist and overcome the unsurmountable obstacles for the past four years. Of course, I also congratulate the President, the Dean, the faculty and administration of this university for the excellent teaching, guidance, and the appropriate learning environment that required that is required to transform your medical students into excellent medical graduates, ready to take on a year of postgraduate internship in their hospital of choice. Moreover, I congratulate your college for undergoing voluntary external accreditation with PASCO. This is the path towards achieving your mission, your vision, mission goals, and maintaining your cultural excellence and service that is a part of the global standard set forth by the World Federation for Medical Education. PASCO is recognized by the U.S. Department of Education and the U.S. Educational Council for Foreign Medical Graduates. ECFMG for short. This afternoon, as you are about to receive your MD diploma, I would like to talk about expectations and other stuff that you will find useful as you leave the portals of your alma mater and venture into the world beyond your college of medicine. The current health situation in our country is best described in a nutshell by the abstract of the Philippines Health Systems Review published in 2011. And I quote, Health status has improved dramatically in the Philippines over the past 40 years. Infant mortality has dropped by two-thirds. The prevalence of communicable diseases has fallen. And life expectancy has has increased to over 70 years. However, considerable inequities in healthcare access and outcomes between socioeconomic groups remain. A major driver of inequity is the high cost of accessing and using healthcare. PhilHealth, the National Health Insurance Agency, has incrementally increased population coverage, but the limited breadth and depth of coverage has resulted in high levels of out-of-pocket payments. In July 2010, a major reform effort aimed at achieving universal coverage was launched, and this focused on increasing the number of poor 
families enrolled in field health, providing a more comprehensive benefits package, and reducing or eliminating all payments. Attracting and retaining staff in underserved areas is a key challenge. The Philippines is a major exporter of health workers, yet some air, rural and poor areas still face with health shortages. Inefficiency in service delivery persists as patient referral system and gatekeeping do not work well. Successive reform efforts in financing, service delivery, and regulation have attempted, have, have attempted to tackle these and other inefficiencies and inequalities in the health system. But implementation has been challenged by the decentralized environment and the presence of the large private sector, often creating fragmentation and variation in the quality of services across the country. And go. This is the real world situation and context that we are in at the moment. And this is the kind of environment where you will immerse yourself as a postgraduate intern and later on as a practicing physician. There are numerous challenges and so consequently numerous opportunities to excel. With May 1, you will begin your postgraduate internship that will provide you the learning opportunities to integrate your knowledge and values and hone your clinical skills in the various settings, including in the community. I hope that it was the potential for learning opportunities that dictated your choice when you made your choice of hospital in the internship matching program. As a postgraduate intern, you will need the clinical experience in your chosen hospital. Supervised learning in a variety of clinical settings is the best method to learn the art and practice of medicine. The consultants and residents will guide you in providing competent and compassionate care of your patients. However, much shall rest on your own initiatives to achieve your learning objectives. Focus on must-know areas, including the common diseases and common causes of death in the country. And you should find time to reflect on your clinical experiences in order to recognize lessons learned. It is best to complement lessons learned with readings on the topic. These lessons learned are the building blocks of your clinical knowledge and experience that in time will lead to the so-called clinical eye and your clinical acumen as a general medical practitioner. Every day you should ask yourself, what have you learned in order to provide excellent care for your patients? Your clinical experiences during your postgraduate internship will prepare you for the physician's licensure examination next year. Data from the Professional Regulatory Board of Medicine shows that medical graduates of your school have a very high chance of passing the licensure examinations. However, you should not be complacent. Always do your best, nothing less. Always aim to be one of the top ten. Even if you don't get to the top 10, you pass, and that's good for you and the school. Halfway through your postgraduate internship, preferably you should be already decide on the role of the physician you would like to pursue for your career path. Will you be a clinician, a teacher, researcher, a public health practitioner, a social mobilizer, an administrator manager? or a combination thereof. The clinician will mean a general medical practitioner, a specialist, or a sub-specialist. The overwhelming majority of your class will become clinicians, with some also becoming a teacher and or researcher on the side. Some will become public health practitioners or administrator managers. 
And the underlying reason behind this phenomenon is the fact that most of your faculty are role models are clinicians. And our current medical curriculum is skewed towards hospital practice. Furthermore, at the present time, there is no doubt that, clinic, that clinical practice is financially rewarding. If, however, you are undecided on the career path to pursue, I suggest that you take up general practice for at least two years. There are many options to choose from. You can join the Doctors for Departments program of the Department of Health, because aside from the opportunity to serve as a municipal health physician in an underserved area, at the end of your term, you will be able to obtain a master's degree in management which will serve you well in your future endeavors. Or you can join NGOs with advocacies for community and health development. Or you can start your own private practice for joint field health or any other government facility, the Department of National Defense, the Philippine National Police, or local government. There are numerous places to go to gain experience and context of the local setting that will eventually lead you to decide where you may proceed and establish your own niche. The choice is yours. It might be on the road less traveled, but it ultimately leads to the service of the Filipino people. For those interested to pursue specialty of subs or subspecialty practice, you should consider residency training in your specialty of choice and further fellowship training in your subspecialty of choice. The process of training is long and difficult. So watch our parents. The period of support is not yet complete. Depending on your choice of your specialty of choice, the duration of training can be from three to five years. Or if you pursue further subspecialty, you have additional year for maybe two or three or four years. After which, you have to undertake certified examinations to achieve what we call diplomate status. The diplomate status signifies safe and competent healthcare provider. The process of certification is arduous with written and oral examinations. In some specialty boards, passing a practical examination is an additional requirement. This is to ensure patient safety. It is only right that the healthcare provider should undergo rigorous training in order to provide good and excellent patient care. After a prescribed period of specialty or subspecialty practice, your peers will nominate diplomate for fellowship. And holders of such fellowship are deemed not only safe and competent, but ethical in their practice. And the learning and training does not end here. As a practicing clinician, you have to fulfill requirements for continuing professional developments, both in the PRC and that of your specialty society. You have to keep abreast with new developments in your field of practice. And you know, in the future, it will not be far-fetched that the risk certification may be required by the Professional Regulatory Board of Medicine in the renewal of practice privileges, just like in other countries of law. Furthermore, for those who are teaching medical schools, the academic faculty should undergo training pedagogy and related topics, and, with, and better still, obtain a master's degree in a related field of expertise or obtain a PhD. This is to ensure excellent teaching and research in the medical school. Transforming yourselves into compassionate and competent doctors is a lifelong process that continues beyond graduation. It requires a passion for it. It is a calling that demands so much of you in time and effort, with gratifying outcomes that patients truly achieve. 
when you entered medical school, you have made a choice. When you persisted in your program of study despite, despite difficulties, you persisted, you exercise your persistence and determination to fruition. You are trained to solve problems of your patients. You decide the best option in order to provide the best patient care possible. And you have learned that doing nothing is also a choice. And such is the case when you say, I have no choice. It is the choice you have actually made. However, this may limit your potential to do what you can actually do or be what you can actually be. God created you with the potential to be what you want to be and the gift to make a choice. As a medical graduate of one of the best medical schools today, you have the potential to achieve many things in the future. 25 years from now, members of your class can be department chairs or president of specialty of subspecialty organizations or hospital directors or dean of medical schools or DOH regional directors or even secretary of health. Be mindful of choices you make. It has great impact on the professional life that you will have. As a person, you have other needs that you should address. You cannot passively just study, study, and study. As Stephen Covey would put it, you have to love, to live, to learn, and to leave a legacy. All these in proper perspective. These are the basic needs in life in order to achieve success in our chosen endeavors. First things first. Or before anything, always keep your family stable and firm. The challenge for us is how to reach a good balance to maintain an equilibrium that allows you to achieve your goals. For one, you can adopt a healthy lifestyle to keep fit in order for you to continue to treat your patients. You should continually learn to be the compassionate and competent doctor that you want to be. Provided you always do your best in performing your tasks as a physician throughout your career, you will eventually leave a lasting legacy on your patients, at the very least. Eventually, as physicians, you should participate actively in the preparation of the next generation of doctors as called for in our call to ethics. You should not feel threatened by younger colleagues. Instead, you should encourage and nurture younger colleagues to be the healthcare professionals that they should be. In time, younger colleagues will also gain the wisdom of the years and will gladly take care of us in our twilight years. Participate actively in your advocacies, perform your civic duties, and contribute time and effort towards making your community a better place to live in. Admittedly, our existing medical curriculum needs improvement to address the mismatch of what is taught and what is expected by the medical graduate in practice. There is a worldwide clamor for instructional and institutional reforms in medical education. This is well documented in the 2010 Budget Commission report that you can download from the internet. There is also a call from the World Health Organization for more doctors, but not of the same kind. And there is also a call for social accountability of medical schools to actively participate in addressing local needs. These global influences have been incorporated in the efforts of CHEP towards rationalizing medical education in the Philippines. Ample opportunity shall be provided for medical schools to achieve excellence by the year 2020. And the operational definition of excellence is an institutional passing rate of which medical graduates of at least 90 percent in the physician's licensure examination. So you can just imagine when we reach that point, all 42 medical schools in the country all the passing rate 
is 90%. Who will benefit from that situation? The Filipino people. The reforms that are forthcoming includes, but are not limited to the following. We are shifting to all campus-based education. The imposition of NMAT cut-off score of at least 40 personal time as admission requirement to medical school and the continuation of joint PRC CHED monitoring visits. While CHED may require only minimum requirements, quality assurance through voluntary standard accreditation by PASCO is strongly recommended. And I'm happy to, to say, to announce that this month, both PPMC and PASCO launched quality assurance for between medical schools, whereby all medical schools will now be eligible for an external for a accreditation visit regardless of the school's performance in the physician license examinations. This to me is a major step towards achieving excellence in 2020. In the ASEAN region, you must have heard of the mutual recognition arrangements for implementation of this year. These arrangements will allow mobility professionals, including doctors, across countries in the ASEAN region. Initially, among the health professions, it will apply to doctors, dentists, and nurses. And only doctors who are specialists and practicing for at least five years in the whole country can participate. Furthermore, existing requirements to practice in the destination country has to be complied with. So foreign specialists will have to pass the Philippine Physician's License Examinations or secure a special permit from PRC in order to practice in the Philippines. The same is true. Filipino doctors or specialists wanting to practice in other Asian countries, they have to comply with the requirements for practice. In order to promote worker mobility, support recognition of qualifications, facilitate lifelong learning, and promote transfer and learning mobility, the ASEAN Regional Qualifications Framework is being developed. This will enable comparison of qualifications across borders, including the Philippine Qualifications Framework, which is a major step towards a common ASEAN market. So in closing, I have talked about the real world and the current context of our health systems today. It is not perfect. There are so many things going on right now. But do not be overwhelmed by these things. All you need to do is just do your best. I have talked about your expectations and stuff. Medical graduates will find useful, be demanding, but gratifying journey to be excellent physician. And the choice is yours. And the challenge that I leave with each one of you today is that you should be mindful to always do your best to serve God and country. Thank you and a pleasant good afternoon.